hope everyone is doing good today. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I did six straight back braids into a bun. Um, I think, I think Lori Harvey did this style before. I don't know, but this style is like pretty popular. Um, and it's pretty, it's fairly easy, fairly, you know, quick. It's a really cute style. Um, so first what I like to do is I like to actually pre-section all of the sections before I start. And the reason why I do this is because I want to make sure that all my parts are even and that, you know, one braid won't be like tremendously thicker than the other braid. I think it's actually really important in make sure, making sure that you have consistency with the braids. But I just like to flat twist the braids away just so they're, you know, like nice and neat and so I can see the whole head clearly before I actually start braiding. So the gel that I'm using for this style is of course Shine and Jam. Um, I really like this gel as I mentioned in other videos because it like it works with pretty much any texture um, and it's not too, it doesn't flake, you know, it's not too greasy, it's not too strong of a hole but it'll definitely like make your hair lay flat. I just love this gel, it's very nice. Um, but I was just checking with my client making sure that she liked the part before I started um, braiding. So before I go into details about how I actually like attach the hair and everything, some tips that I can give you is to like when you're starting the braid, start off with grabbing like smaller pieces. I feel like a lot of people, well, especially me in the beginning, I would mess up because I would grab too big, too big of sections as I was going on throughout the braid and then it'll make the braid look lumpy or just really inconsistent. So I would say like as you're braiding, make sure you grab like little sections. It might be a bit more tedious, but it'll definitely make the look a lot better. So when starting the braid, I believe I take it underhand is what people call it. But I basically, you know, I grab my three sections and I twist the right section underneath the middle and then the left underneath the middle and I keep um, varying between those two. Um, when I add in the hair, I basically just place a piece of hair underneath and I just continuously braid. I'm actually going to show you this process a couple times, but as you can see, I just, I grab the hair and I kind of like place it in the middle and then I just literally continue on braiding like I was doing before with varying between the right and left sections. I apologize for my uh, shoulder being in the way. I wasn't very conscious of the cam of the camera when I was doing this, so I'm sorry about that. But um, yeah, I mean, I feel like this practice is really, well, I feel like this style can really be like perfected in practice. I'm not sure how much I can actually like explain to you, but I, you know, just vary between the right and left sections. And then um, I add more hair towards the end, of course, because, you know, we want the braids thicker towards then. Um, yeah, I feel like, oh, if you wanted to do like stitch braids, you would just make sure that you like define the parts more when you're um, actually grabbing the hair. Some people like to do it with their pinky. Some people like to do it with their comb. I feel like my fingers kind of naturally do it. I wasn't even intentionally trying to. But um, sometimes it comes out that way, especially if you're being like really careful with the amount of hair that you're grabbing. In her bun she did want little curly pieces sticking out so what I did to add those in is I basically just like put one part of the um, curly piece into the braid and I just kept braiding down just leaving one part out and then um, I'll show you the details when I actually wrap her bun but this is what made like the curly bun effect
A really important tip when you're doing braids like this is to make sure that your client's hair is like fully detangled because if it's not then you're obviously going to be able to tell in the braids like you only have six braids and they're on her scalp so like you have no leeway when it comes to you know like imperfections um so i just make sure her hair is like properly detangled and then i gel the sections again because this really helps with flatness and overall neatness of the style and plus when i initially did her sections i didn't really use much gel just enough gel to where like i could clearly define the different sections I feel like when I'm doing these braids, the hardest piece of hair to add is that initial piece because you don't want to put too much strain on her edges, but you do still want the braid to be, you know, attached to her hair. You don't want to leave like too much hair out in the front. I feel like with that, it's really important to grab a fur, like for your first piece of like braiding hair that you attach, grab a smaller section of hair that will help a lot. And also that will put like minimal strain on her edges when you're like applying the braid. But for this braid, I'm not going to talk you through as much because I feel like some people are visual learners like me. Um, I am going to talk on probably the last one though, but enjoy. So I will say that I'm not like absolutely perfect at these braids, but I feel like I'm good enough to where I can give you some pretty good tips. Um, so another thing that I've learned throughout time is you kind of want to add hair based on the density of the person's hair. So say someone has super thick hair, you're not usually going to add as much braiding hair simply because like the braid would be super thick and it won't really give you the look. But I feel like her hair is like medium density, so I added like a good amount of hair. Um, another really important thing is like try to make sure you tuck her her like the client's natural hair underneath the braiding hair because this will help with longevity and like neatness of the overall style the best way i can try to explain this is like seriously take your time when you're going through and like literally just ensuring that the braiding hair is physically over her actual natural hair when you're braiding um, for this style, I actually ended up adding about five pieces into each of her individual braids. And the size sections for the braiding hair was probably from, it ranges from pinky size to probably like index finger size. Um, like I mentioned before, towards the end of the braid, that's when I added like thicker pieces of hair. Because, you know, of course you want like that smaller to bigger effect in the braid. The best advice I can give you for consistency with your um, braids like this is I would say like take your time. Just be super intentional with like literally every fold over that you do and then your braid will come out nice. It just takes like 
spending actually like quality time, you know, putting time into your work and just having the discipline to be patient enough to like do every stitch pretty nicely, you know. But as I go on the braid, I just, you know, vary between um, crossing the right section underneath the middle section from the left. Um, and honestly, that's pretty much it to the style. I guess like the motion is pretty self-explanatory and pretty, you know, like repetitive. But I would say, you know, like when you're trying to perfect your style, definitely take your time with making sure that you tuck in um, the client's hair. And then um, make sure that you take your time with grabbing the sections of hair like from her actual head and then adding in the braiding hair, of course. I'm sorry if the instructions weren't as thorough as you may have needed. If you have like a direct question, please feel free to comment because I will try my very best to answer you. It's just very hard to try to describe like this motion, especially because like I've been doing it for so long. It's kind of like intuitive for me, but it's like with the braid. If you have any actual questions on like any motions, any hand positions or something like that, please just leave a comment and I will do my very best to explain to you. But um, first I start off by, of course, like putting her hair in like a ponytail and then like I just wrapped it around until I got the bun to my liking. Um, for those curly pieces, I did have to like make sure that I intentionally took those out so that they did show through the bun. And um, you just see me snipping like some of the straight braiding hair. But yes, for the bun, I have to make sure that I like purposely put out the curly pieces because otherwise they would not have like usually stuck out. I just sewed it together so that it's stable and so that the bun, you know, like won't budge when she's sleeping or anything like that. You could also use bobby pins or more rubber bands if you wanted to, but I just like to sew it because, um, I don't know, I just find like it's, I just find that it's easier and I like, it just, I just like it more. It just looks better than me. So once I am done with the braids and the bun, I just like to um, do my client's edges, especially for like a style like this. It's very like sleek, you know, I just feel like it tops off the style. Um, I use the Murray's uh, Edge Wax, I believe is what it's called, but it's actually pretty popular. Um, I will say that the, the longevity of the hold isn't the best, but it definitely gets the look um, and it doesn't flake so that clients can, you know, like do their edges when they want to when they're at home and everything. But that is pretty much like the end of this style. Uh, my client really liked it. This is like what she asked for. So I was really happy I could provide that for her. Um, if you're interested in booking me, I am in Virginia. Stop by Quay. But thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe.